best and worst e-bikes and e-bike products for 2021. Riders, welcome back to Sands Bikes, where you know we only talk e-bikes, and Merry Christmas to every rider out there. A massive shout out to all the support we had in 2021, a massive 2 million views on the channel, and I thank each and every one of you riders. And a massive shout out to Schwabi, making the best e-bike tires in the business, and Insta360, the best, the coolest, the smallest action camera on the market. And let's start it off with a bang. By far the best thing that has come to the e-bike market in 2021, maybe you've guessed it riders, is the Sam's Bike Finder. The best, the first, the original e-bike finder on the internet. If you are confused on what e-bike to buy in 2021, you should be because the market has exploded. Check it out, go to the website, you can put in all your details, you can do a quick search, you can do a full pro search, you can see a massive list of the bikes, you can actually also have a meeting with me, I can help you pick that next bike. It's all there riders, I hope you love it. Now this will be in no order whatsoever, just the best and the worst things I've seen in the e-bike market for 2021. Starting it off with a bang, Levo Gen 3, Kinevo SL, that six-way geometry change, mastermind, mission control. Specialized has definitely lifted the bar here, and I think it's a great thing because all the other bike companies will follow suit. Or Bayer Rise Hydro, 19 kilos, 540-watt battery, 60-newton-meter motor, aluminum frame, starting at 5,000 euros. I don't really know how or Bayer have done this, but they're definitely pushing the market in the right direction. Finally, Yeti entered the e-bike market with the 160E. What a sensational bike. Everyone that's ridden it have said it's an amazing system. I love the kinematics of the suspension. I love that it's got really good small bump, mid stroke, and then that pause between mid and bottom out. And I really think that's a clever system from Yeti because e-bikes are heavier and they do bottom out easier. Giant Rain E Plus, amazing looking bike, 750 watt battery, great pricing, great spec. Really impressive what Giant's done this year. And Score, the new company from Switzerland, actually the sister company of BMC, dropping two bombs on the industry this year. I love the trail bike and the enduro bike, short change days, 720 watt battery, EP8 motor, Great build and starting from just over 6,000 euros, they are gonna sell a lot of these and hopefully, fingers crossed riders, I'm gonna get on one next year. Trek showing us there's a battery war in the e-bike market in 2022. I definitely wasn't expecting Trek to update the rail so quickly. They put a 750 watt battery in it. They put the new Bosch smart system. It looks really good. I think the geometry is a little bit more enduro than trail but definitely a great looking bike. Marin showing us radical geometry in a trail bike, 63 degree head tube angles, 160, 150 with a 435 chain state. Loving those geo numbers, super interesting bike. And Mondraker also up in the game with a 750 watt battery and the new Bosch smart system in the Crafty. And also in the top models of the Crafty, They've got Mind, which is kind of like a suspension setup. It actually helps you get the most out of your e-bike, which I think is really great to see because we have so many new riders entering the market. High Bike Enduro 7, 5,500 euros, killer spec. Yam PWX3 motor, 750 watt battery, MT7 brakes. This bike is absolutely blinging, 5,500 euros. I'm loving that bike. Maybe the chain stays are a little bit too long, but it would be a beast on the downhills. And Norco changing things up, selling e-bikes without batteries. Hmm, interesting move, but hear me out. They're selling the bikes without batteries and you can choose a 540, a 720, or a whopping 900. I think this is an interesting move from Norco because a lot of people don't need a 900 or even a 720. A lot of my friends only have two hours and a 540 is gonna be totally sufficient for that. 
I'm not loving the geometry numbers of the new Norco e-bikes though. I think they might have sacrificed a little bit in chain stay 462 to fit in that 900 watt battery. Maybe I'm wrong, but with their new range, which is their best selling enduro traditional mountain bike, their chain stays are 440. So I'm not sure why they think just because it's an e-bike, we should go to 462. But anyway, good move by Norco selling those batteries on the side. It'd be interesting to see what type of supply issues we might see with that. Okay, let's look at some trends that started in 2022. I'm loving to see the automatic suspension that's hitting the market. We've got flight attendant, Fox live valve, and now mine from Mondraker. I think this is really good because if you look at the, the new high-end e-bikes, these bikes are really hard to set up. You've got low speed, high speed compression, you've got low speed, high speed rebound. And if you get that wrong, the bike's really not gonna feel great. And there's also so many new riders coming into the market. So this is a great thing, they're gonna get the most out of their e-bike. More e-bikes on the market. If you look back 18 months to two years ago, if you look at tier one mountain bike companies, they probably had like one mountain bike on the market. Now, most tier ones would have two or three or even four, and tier two and three have one or two each respectively. So the market is definitely heating up. Zebs and 38s. This has been a great change for the e-bike market because we know those mountain bikes are heavier. And the major benefit for these forks is the flex you get from braking. And also when you go plowing through a rock garden, the forks don't flex again, they don't come in so they don't move, you actually just push straight over it. And I can tell you, I was riding Lyrics before, and now I've gone on to 38s, and wow, I can definitely push harder. It's definitely more, it feels a lot like a downhill fork. E-bikes are far more accepted in our community. Again, only 18 months ago or two years ago, all my friends were saying, Sam, what are you doing? Why are you riding an e-bike? You're not an old man, and now, I would say like 90% of my friends, okay, I'm 41, I'm not a spring chicken, but 90% of my friends have e-bikes and the other 10 are thinking about getting e-bikes. So it's definitely far more accepted now. Bigger batteries, we saw Specialized start the trend with the 700, which was whopping. And now most of the companies have caught up and they're using 750s in the top tier bikes. And also with Norco, a massive 900. I personally, I think 700 is about the limit. Well, actually on a Bosch, I think 625 is really good because on a Bosch, I feel like I'm getting a very similar range to the bros of the 700. So a 750 on a Bosch is gonna be an absolute monster for range. 220 rotors, we are seeing them come stock on some electric mountain bikes. I would love to see more of this. There's not that much of a weight penalty, and I do think you are getting better braking performance, especially from the front rotor. The new Bosch smart system, okay, it doesn't do that much yet, so it's not that smart but it definitely was a step in the right direction for Bosch. Unfortunately, this new system is not backwards compatible, but it will make the benchmark for stepping forward. And I think we're gonna see a lot of great things from Bosch in 2022. And also Yamaha releasing the PWX3, only like a year or 18 months after releasing the PX2. I think that's crazy. Yamaha definitely wanna get in that top tier motor. I think that anyone that's looking at buying a new e-bike in 2022 and they know what they're talking about would put the top tier motors would be Bosch, Bros, Shimano. And then right underneath that now is Yamaha. They're really trying to get to that top tier and I think they're gonna do it. Releasing that motor back to back so quickly and fingers crossed riders, I'll be testing that motor early in 2022. Okay, and what you've been waiting for, the worst, e-bikes and e-bike parts for 2021. Well, I'm gonna say riders, every bike out there were the worst e-bikes in 2021 because we couldn't get them. There's been no stock and hopefully that's changing, but it's been really hard. You know, when I talk to people, they're like, hey Sam, I'm, I'm looking at this bike, this bike, or this bike. 
I'm like, okay, they're all good options. Which one can you actually buy? So by far the worst thing for 2021 was availability. And the ugly bike of the year has to go to BH. Sorry, BH, but what are your designers doing? This bike looks like it's had a head on with a semi or gone straight into a tree. I have actually heard it's a very good bike. Uh, Jorge, my mate, the Punisher has ridden it and tested it. He said it was really good, but I think it is not a great looking bike. And Yeti 160E making it to the best and the worst. I would say it was the worst marketing claim of the year. Yeti said they'd made the first Pacific race bike. Now, I've tested all the motors. I'm betting you there's no way a Shimano is gonna win a race next year unless they dramatically change this motor. So that it really made me laugh, but the Yeti is an amazing bike, but I just don't think it's ever gonna win a race. And the last bike on the list, Enemit. And this is not a bad bike at all. It's actually a very interesting bike. It got on the list because it really annoyed me. It's a high pivot e-bike. It looks awesome but they only put a 504 watt battery in it and it weighs like 22, 23 kilos. I would have loved to have seen this come at 19 or 20 kilos and with a range extender because it would be a very interesting bike, but it's also quite expensive. I think they definitely need to put a 630 or even a 720 in this bike. And things I was hoping to see that I haven't seen this year that I hope we get next year. Come on Shimano and Tram, we need to see a specific e-bike group set. E-Saint, that would be awesome. These bikes are heavier, we're definitely doing some gnarly stuff on them. So we need, I reckon we need like bigger burly brakes, bigger cranks. Like the Shimano cranks, I broke like three in a year. I would love to see some Shimano Saint cranks that fit the EP8 motor. It wouldn't be that hard for them to do and I'd also like to see high ratio 9, 10 or even 11 speed derailers. And this is something that really annoys me. I wanna see all e-bikes being weighed without tires in 2022. Hear me out riders, a lot of these brands are putting rubbish tires on e-bikes so they come in at 21 and a half or 22 kilos but then when you put a proper Schwalbe tire on, like, you know, double down, gravity casing, downhill casing, if you're riding these bikes hard, that's what you need. So you add an extra two kilos, and then the bike companies that are doing that, only a few of the actual riders understand they've done that, and they understand the extra weight. So I'd love to see e-bikes weighed without tires. More 20 kilo e-bikes entering the market if you're a fan of the channel, you would know I love the Lever SL, I love the Kineva SL, and I really love the look of the new Orbea Rice Hydro. I mean, 19 kilos with a 540 watt battery. That is very impressive. I would love to see more bike brands entering this market. And I also think next year is gonna be the year of the super light e-bikes. Internal gearbox, no more chains and derailers. E-bikes, this is so possible. Like. I would love to see Shimano or SRAM enter this market, but maybe, maybe they make too much money out of selling the chains and cassettes and they don't want to. Not sure, what do you think, riders? Okay, riders, that was a little brain dump of the best and the worst for 2021. But for me, the absolute standout products were Levo Gen 3, I love that bike. Best motor, it's gotta to go to the Bosch with a 750 watt battery, super impressive and the best suspension kinematics. It's got to go to the Yeti 160E. Super impressive system. I haven't ridden it yet, but everyone that has ridden it has been blown away. And one thing that has changed my riding this year is Mastermind using Microtune and attaching my heart rate monitor to Microtune. So when I go out training now, it's super simple. I don't need to charge my Garmin. I attach my heart rate monitor. It's all on the Mastermind. And I go for a two hour training session and I monitor my heart rate. Let's say I'm at 130, and that's where I wanna to be to burn the fat, because I drink a few beers over Christmas. And if I go, let's say I go up to like 150, all I do is I hit microtune, and microtune you can actually go from 10% increments up, so zero to 
So if I'm at 150 and I wanna bring my heart rate down to 130, all I go is microtune, go 20% or 10% up and watch my heart come down. By far the best product I have been testing in 2021. But riders, let me know what were the best products for you in 21? What do you wanna see more of in the channel in 2022? And I hope you had a great Christmas and you had a great relaxing time with the family, got out on the bike, stayed safe with the COVID. It's going pretty crazy in Spain, but we're okay. And riders, stay safe out there and we're gonna see you next week. Thank you.